Yesterday, the 23rd of January 2024, I was re refused entry via a te telecom link into the High Court in London. Now, I've come here, uh, there was accusations that I didn't exist and obviously was refused, so I'm here to put out my statement which they not only refused me to put out, but they refused the authorised representative of the claimant company. So here's the, here's the first part of the, the skeleton they refused me to, to present. It is apparent the court and the defendant seek to pervert the claimant, claimant me and its witness from its constitutional right to state its case and give evidence remotely when law and technology provide so. There is an overwhelming public interest as well as of paramount importance in the interests of proper administration of justice that the claimant is given the, the right to be heard by a fair and independent tribunal. That has never happened and now it is blatantly obvious that the judiciary in this case are compromised and there is no independence and the rules, rules of natural justice are being violated. I'm now going to pass over the reading out of the skeleton, which I was stopped from. I was stopped from uh, reading out yesterday to the witness in the case, Mr. Milner. Yeah. Go. Um, well, Mr. Fancourt, I'm very, very shocked, to put it mildly, by your conduct, because you did know that you were conflicted. You did know that my witness statement of the 25th of September 2023 named you and Miles as defendants for perverting the course of justice in November 2020 and there's evidence adduced in my bundles in my two exhibits with my witness statement to prove that you actually did do what the evidence proves that you did and what I allege that you did in my witness statement. And you've come in back into the case to act as judge of your own cause, to prevent justice being served on you and Miles. And in conspiracy, Miles refused the claimant, Duida and Mr. Walsh, its acting director, the right to be heard and to present its case constituting a flagrant violation of Article 6.1 of the Human Rights Act, 1998. It was brought to our attention following the hearing that you, Mr. Fancourt, negated whatsoever to account for the fact that I have been absolutely immune from civil suit ever since 20th of March 2017 when I reported the fraud by false representation on the third count committed by Julian Gill of Womble Bond Dickinson Solicitors in Newcastle acting for the second defendant who had submitted that claim to the first defendant on the 2nd of February 2017. That was in fact the third proof of debt claim. The first was the blackmail that Middlesbrough Football Club sought to prove on the 15th of August 2016. That was the time that the occasion for setting off, as in paragraph 7 of Stein v Blake, i.e. the highest court of the land's final determination, in relation to the law on set-off, 
So what I'm getting at, Mr. Fancourt, is the double D, the double dealing, as it were, the misdealing, and where this is all going. Because you read an email where I asked your co-conspirators at the GLD and the Attorney General's office and the official receiver who you purport to act all act for, where is the defence and where is the determination? Because Throughout the course of public justice, people have told lies and people have said everything's been finally determined. But unlike those people, the AI doesn't lie. And there's a very simple way of proving that. And we did it in the documentation, in the evidence that you have concealed throughout this case. And that is um, in document investigation of nine the two-page AI report, it concludes that there are 341 searches, um, positive matches for the terms 1425, as in 1425 with the insolvency rules, and set off as in insolvency set off. determination from the Court of Appeal on the issue of the doctrine of witness immunity. From page 20 of the 30 page authority I must read out this part. By complete authority including the authority of this house it has been decided that the privilege of a witness the immunity from responsibility in an action when evidence has been given by him in a court of justice is too well established now to be shaken. Practically, I may say that in my view, it is absolutely unarguable. It is settled in law and cannot be doubted. The remedy against a witness who has given evidence which is false and injurious to another is to indict him for perjury but for very obvious reasons, the conduct of legal procedure by courts of justice with the necessity of compelling witnesses to attend involves as one of the necessities of, of the administration of justice, the immunity of witnesses from actions being brought against them in respect of evidence they have given. So far, the matter I think is too plain for argument. Paragraph 35. There is no restraint order against Mr. Millinder. There was never jurisdiction to make one. Even if there was, issue estoppel, which lays at the heart of the GLD's purported contention, and that of Fancourt's in his order of 17th January 24, applies to the decision by Andrews LJ in the Divisional Administrative Court. And this is under the heading Acts Outside Jurisdiction, an affront to the determination by Andrews LJ. Fancourt's order of 17th January 24 stated this, highlighted red in brackets, to focus the, on the salient parts in question. And I'll read out the parts of your order, Mr. Fankel, or should I say your purported order that doesn't actually exist in law. 
and upon the official receiver by her acting lawyers, the government legal department, writing to the court, in brackets, copied to the applicant on 15th January 24, drawing to the court's attention that the principal application and the secondary application appear to be a breach of the all proceedings order made again under section 42 of the Senior Courts Act 1981 against Paul Millender on 6th July 2021 in brackets the vexatious litigant order on the basis that Mr Millender is making the principal application and the secondary application through the agency of Dewey Limited and or Mr Walsh. Number one the principal application and secondary application are to be listed before the court on the 23rd of January 24 at 10.30 a.m. at an in-person hearing solely for the purpose of enabling Duida Limited to show why those applications should not be summarily dismissed on the ground that each is a breach of the vexatious litigant order. The vexatious litigant order doesn't exist. There was never jurisdiction to make one. So it goes on to state that Mr. Rinder is not a vexatious litigant, but someone who has been defrauded by criminal offenders in judicial and public office who acted in conspiracy with the primary offenders, and they would be the defendants in this case. Secondly, Fancourt would have known given that he was the one concealing the same point at issue in November 2020, the primary issue distinctly pleaded and proven in the claimant's application of the 11th of September 23 has been concealed and never determined at all. The GLD knew likewise before lying and stating it had. Thirdly, the claimant relied on the impartial AI-generated search results of the evidence and purported determinations to prove beyond reasonable doubt that the fraud in this case entailing fraudulent breach of duty in conspiracy by depriving Mr Millinder of the statutory insolvency set-off rights conferred in Rule 14.25 of the Insolvency Rules 2016 has never been touched on in any of the purported determinations. The important final judgment by the House of Lords in Annis Minnick 1969 relied on C's application of 7th September 23. It finally determined a purported determination is also a nullity for the points at issue have never in fact been determined at all. The impartial AI search revealed the extent of the fraudulent concealment throughout the course of public justice. There were 341 exact matches for the term set off and 1425 in the claimant and Mr Millinder's evidence and no single match in any of the purported determinations. And yet Mr Millinder's case is founded because the court and the defendants acted dishonestly to deprive Mr Millinder and creditors of both EW and EEI of that statutory right to prevent justice being served on D2 and to defraud those creditors of over 10 million. Issue estoppel, a complete defence to the contention. Andrews, Lady Justice, a superior judge, sitting in the Divisional Administrative Court in the same case on the 1st November 22, said this after examination of the issue and the assignment. If Dweida was a genuine assignee, then a ruling against Millinder as an individual would not have any bearing on its right to litigate. That is what she said. An issue estoppel applies to the finding of the Superior Court judge. Paragraph 43 states this, that statement itself is answer to Fancourt and GLD's fantasy that the restraint order, even if it were genuine, would not prevent an assignee under the Law of Property Act 1925 who is assigned a right to claim from claiming. Such an order is against the individual, 
not against any right of action vested in him. Issue estoppel applies, proving that the purported restraint order does not have any bearing on C's right to litigate and that it is an abusive process for the defendants to affront determination on the issue by a divisional court as a way to avoid trial. The claimant must therefore be awarded costs for its substantial time wasted in dealing with something that has already been decided in its favour. Paragraph 48 is, according to section 136 of the Law of Property Act 1925, the claimant is a genuine assignee and the right to claim becomes effectual in law from the date notice has been given to the parties. Law does not preclude the assignor or the assignee from knowing each other, nor a witness giving evidence. Next, underlined heading. Absolute contradictions and lies by the GLD, the Government Legal Department that is. The contents of GLD's admissions in their statutory replies in the administrative court proceedings and they are a complete U-turn on the excuses and lies they were portraying before to evade the same issues being aired in court. Um, so now we're going to go to paragraph 51. I take you to page 76 of 223, the report. And at paragraph 20 to 22, where their lies are highlighted red. Those lies were then told by the GLD and the, those defendants in the administrative court proceedings in the GLD statutory reply to the claimant's application of the 15th of June 2022 within those proceedings. That application, nor the claimant's claim, although paid for and issued, have ever been determined. I cite from paragraph 9 of the GLD's response. Third, Duida is not directly affected by the Section 42 order and therefore CPR 40.9 is not engaged. That order affects Mr. Melinda only. The fact, in brackets, if it is a fact, close brackets, that Mr. Melinda has assigned any rights to Duida is immaterial. Now, the GLD and the first defendant's position is exactly the opposite as to what the GLD are saying in, in the same case about the same issue, which is the opposite as to the decision made by Andrews of which issue estoppel is effective. And you, Mr. Fancourt, you stated this, and this is what Duida wanted to refer you to, and what was the, co the court was to consider, were it not for your perversion of the course of justice, acting outside jurisdiction. The principal application and the secondary application appear to be a breach of your proceedings order made against Section 42 of the Senior Courts Act 1981 against Paul Melander on 6th July 2021 in brackets, the vexatious litigant order. And you, you imply that I'm the one, the assignee, sorry, the assignor, that assigned my rights of action to Duida. When the Lady Justice of Appeal has stated that that doesn't preclude Duida from litigating, you're now precluding Duida from litigating, proving that Duida was a party directly affected under CPR, CPR 40.9, an application made by a party directly affected by the order. And yet your conspirators, the GLD, are stating that Duida is not directly affected by the Section 42 order, and therefore CPR 40.9 is not engaged. That order affects Mr. Melinda only. Issue estoppel applies to that finding, Mr. Fancourt. 
Paragraph 54 states this, Mr. Melinda assigned the rights of action and by doing so, by being the genuine assignee in law, it has the right to claim on the basis of the assignment. The GLD and the defendants are all lying and stating that the fraud has been finally determined, yet they've been unable to take us to a singular mention of the point at issue let alone the determination of the fraudulent conspiracy, entailing dishonestly depriving EW and EEI of statutory set-off rights because the claims vested in both companies, extinguish the fraudulent claims that the second defendant and their conspirators sought to prove against both companies. The second defendant never had a claim to prove, yet even if they did, they would not have done but for the fraudulent failure of the corrupt judges and the first defendant to have administered the mandatory law of due process in breach of their judicial and fiduciary duties. It is all fraud. Without lending credence to the fact that the orders by both Miles and Fancourt are nullities void ab initio, the cause why is only too clear in that report because firstly fraud unravels all even post-judgment secondly it's fraud to conceal fraud and thirdly because nothing that ever needed determination ever was detail from the events that unfolded yesterday in the High Court that is, none of this is defendable and you lot are going to be put in to the court in Hong Kong where they will extradite you for anything over 5 million Hong Kong and we're talking about 200 million Hong Kong dollars worth of losses here and human rights abuses. See you all in Hong Kong. When on the 10th of November 2020, I filed an application for a warrant for your arrest, Mr. Fancourt, that was never determined because of the perverters, your co-conspirators in Newcastle, who colluded with the same defendants that you're colluding with now, the Zionist... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.